Hello amazing people this is the health and wellness spot and this is Dr. Lewis Muchile now as we help you understand matters health and as we help you overcome those chronic conditions that you've actually suffered for long we will also want you to actually help us attain or achieve our goals now we have a goal to actually smash the 100,000 mark subscriber mark and because you're here if you're new here you've never subscribed to this channel kindly consider subscribing and press the notification bell so once you do that sit back and wait for me to feed you with health information because a video will be dropping every single day that will open up your mind about the illness uh, in healthcare and also how to reverse chronic conditions so welcome on board and tonight i'm actually going to enlighten you on diabetic ketoacidosis dka and that is something that actually happens in most people who have type 1 diabetes but they don't know they have type 1 diabetes so it actually comes in in those people who are uh, it comes in as a sign as a first sign of people who have been uh, who will head to be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes because these people come in a very very uh, bad state and once the tests are done and the analysis is done we get to realize that they actually uh, have type 1 diabetes where their insulin levels are so low or they don't even produce insulin at all and that impedes the tolerance to glucose so they cannot tolerate glucose and that's how it starts to build up in their blood system causing a lot of problems now are you one of those people who has or is experiencing lethargy very low energy uh, maybe in the morning when you wake up do you have a lot of hunger every time you just want to eat do you have this thirst that is actually always you have you feeling thirsty and as you drink the water 10 minutes down the line you're urinating are you that person who wakes up at night more than five times to go and urinate and as you empty uh, as you urinate you come out of the loo and you still feel like you did not do uh, you did not empty it completely do you have these deep breaths and that you feel like you're like suffocating so you have all this air Uh, you're struggling to actually breathe shortness of breath do you have these palpitations your heart is beating so fast and sometimes you get to faint now these are actually symptoms of dka okay so shock is part of it palpitations and arrhythmias are part of it polydipsia polyphagia polyuria are all symptoms of type 1 diabetes and extremely dka now the reason why i'm doing this video is because there's a confusion between diabetes ketoacidosis and ketoacidosis or rather diabetes ketoacidosis the dka which is uh, an emergency and it is actually confused with ketogenesis or ketosis so those people who don't have diabetes and they don't consume carbohydrates and then their bodies turn to fats as alternative sources of energy to produce ketone bodies that is ketogenesis or ketosis that's a normal one but this other one we have high glucose in blood and then we have the body still thinking that it's starving so it turns to the fat cells to break it down to actually give you ketone bodies that are actually acidic so i'll take you through this so that you can actually understand it and when somebody asks you about it you can easily explain so number one you already know that this one happens in a larger population of people who have uh, type 1 diabetes of course there's a smaller population of people who have type 2 diabetes but this one uh, is for the type 1 diabetes because they are unable to produce uh, a certain amount of insulin required to pump glucose from blood into the cells however as we'll be talking about the system breaking down fats to come to uh, give you energy the ketone bodies as alternative to glucose we will have a question for you so we can hope you can actually answer it in the comment section and you can actually challenge yourself with that so now confusion lethargy fainting uh, a fruity smell from your mouth sometimes just producing this very nice smelling smell, uh, uh, odor from your mouth and then we have uh, excessive thirst we have excessive hunger we have vomiting but this vomiting does not come with diarrhea it just it's just vomiting without diarrhea and then when you faint and you get into a coma you are carried to the hospital basically these are the symptoms of dka and i will tell you this this is how it happens you are a chronic consum- uh, consumer of carbohydrates so you eat carbohydrates all the time or you eat lean protein that can actually be converted to glucose so what you're doing is once you eat these carbohydrates of course you expect them to be digested to release glucose and now this glucose is released into the bloodstream you absorb it into the bloodstream from the gut once you do that you spike blood sugar levels the blood glucose they go beyond the normal value of glucose and as they go beyond the normal value and they stick there for a long period of time which we call chronic 
hyperglycemia. That becomes a serious problem. Remember, you have been diagnosed or you're still having low insulin. So you're no, you've not been diagnosed. Let's say you've not been diagnosed already. So you have low insulin. Your pancreas is struggling to produce insulin or the pancreas is totally uh, failing. The beta cells are not available to produce the insulin. Now, you, you don't have insulin, but you're eating carbohydrates and raising blood glucose levels. Remember, insulin is the key that is supposed to pump glucose from blood into the cells for utilization or for storage as fats, okay? So insulin comes and opens up these cells so that glucose flows from blood into these cells, the brain cells, the muscle cells, the liver cells, and the fat cells, so that it's going there to be utilized or to be stored. But this is the most important part. So you have no insulin, but you have high glucose. Now this glucose does not find a way to go into the cells. So what happens? chronic high blood glucose and that is a problem now as you're doing that as you're having this high glucose in the system remember that is energy but the body is not getting this energy because it cannot move from blood into the cells so the body starts to think that you're actually starving and what does the body do the body is always uh, aimed to survive it's actually designed to survive so whether you eat or you don't eat the body has to survive in a way so what does it do the body now produces hormones that are called the counter regulatory hormones and these hormones are glucagon remember glucagon is a hormone that actually uh, tells the liver to break down glycogen to release glucose so more glucose in the system however glucagon cortisol the growth hormone and epinephrine or adrenaline these are what we call the counter regulatory hormones the ones that you produce every morning when you wake up so that they can actually give you energy for the new day these are the hormones that, we, we, uh, that make us tell you morning breakfast is useless because these hormones are always increasing uh, circulation of glucose and circulation of ketones in your system so that you can actually start your day on a high note. Okay, good. So now, these counter-regulatory hormones, what they do is, because the body is thinking you're starving, these hormones actually now focus on helping the liver to burn down fat. So they encourage the liver to burn down fat to produce ketones. And ketones understand that they are the best energy sources for your system the brain the muscle and the whole body and the cells they are the best but they become a problem when you have diabetes and specifically diabetes type 1 why because ketone bodies are acidic so when you produce them they are acidic that means they will lower the ph of blood they will take your ph from the neutral ph into the acidic ph now that is a very unfavorable ph for the cells okay so when you get into acidosis that's a problem also remember acidosis favors the growth of cancer the growth of diseases and all that so this is a very dangerous condition so now you have two energy sources in the system already you have high glucose and then now you're producing ketones so you have high ketones in the system now you have two energy sources that your body cannot even utilize and that is what we call the dka because one you have diabetes you have high a chronic high blood sugars and then you have keto acidosis you have ketones in blood that are actually causing the acidic ph in blood and that the, therefore the name ketoacidosis so now for you to differentiate this with the other one with the ketogenesis or ketosis in ketosis somebody is not consuming food or carbohydrates therefore the blood glucose levels are going down therefore the liver has broken down glycogen and released the glycogen totally you have utilized that so you have of course you are sensitive to insulin so you're actually taking in the slightest amount of insulin is enough to actually pump glucose from blood into the cells so you have insulin here and it's still sensitive now so you've now broken down uh, glycogen and you've now utilized the glucose now the body thinks i don't have any energy source here so what do i do i have to turn to the fat cells to break them down to give me the ketone bodies that are the best energy sources for the system okay now that is keto genesis you are generating ketones for energy as an alternative to glucose contrary to dka where you have high glucose and then the body still produces counter regulatory hormones that turn to fats to break it down to give you ketone bodies that should be understood because there must be a difference here because some of you when i tell you that fasting is very keen recovery from diabetes you tell me i'll go into a ketoacidosis and i tell you if you have functional kidneys and you have functional uh, lungs you'll never go into uh, ketoacidosis because the lungs and the kidneys are the ones that are responsible for regulation of uh, acidity and basicity basically alkalosis and acidosis so do not worry about that simply fast and your body will turn to the fats to break them down to give you alternative energy 
which is the ketone bodies. Now, somebody who is experiencing uh, uh, DKA or somebody who has not been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, but they end up getting this DKA as their first symptom, they are admitted. And this is actually an emergency. It's a medical emergency that is supposed to be handled in either HDU or an ICU. Okay, which with a lot of monitoring. So it's a serious condition. And unfortunately, most people pass or die from this condition because if, even the therapy, we will see even the therapy that we give, the insulin therapy can actually uh, kill these people. So I will actually make you understand how that happens. So some of the characteristics of DKA, of course, you must have high glucose in the system. Why? You're not able to pump it into the cells for either storage or utilization. Number two, you must have high ketones. Why? Because now the body is actually producing counter-regulatory hormones, thinking that you're starving, yet you have glucose in blood. So now you start producing ketones that get up in blood. Higher levels of ketones in the system. That is number two. Number three, we have acidosis. So these ketone bodies are highly acidic. They lower the pH of blood and you get into acidosis. And these are the reasons why you get the symptoms of DKA. For example, if you have high glucose in the system, uh, levels of about 11.0 and 11.1 and above, these are dangerous levels because at this moment in time, your kidneys will not reabsorb glucose. Remember, you're not supposed to pass glucose through urine. And if you do, the kidneys will take it back. But at levels of about 11.1 millimoles and above, your kidneys cannot reabsorb that glucose. So therefore, it goes out through urine. When it goes out through urine, because the body is struggling to actually excrete that. Now remember, glucose creates this osmotic imbalance and glucose leaves the body with water. It has to live with water because it pulls water towards it and then you urinate glucose, you excrete water and also electrolytes. And the most important electrolyte here is potassium. Okay, so look at it this way. When you're having this high glucose and that the body is struggling to get, get it out through urine, you're going to lose potassium, that is hypokalemia. And remember, potassium is a very, very important uh, mineral in uh, heart function. So it's the one that is responsible for contraction of heart muscles. Excess of it, you, the heart will suffer. Ex uh, the less of it, the heart will suffer. So it has to be maintained. So you lose the potassium as an electrolyte. Number two, as you urinate, you lose water. That is dehydration. Now, what is happening is when you're getting dehydrated, you're actually going to cause problems with the kidneys and with other organs. But you see those are symptoms. So when you get dehydrated, the body has to actually uh, uh, counter that by sending you into thirst. That's why you ex have this excessive thirst. You urinate, you ease up on glucose, you ease up on uh, potassium, you get into dehydration and the body sends you into thirst. Now that is polydipsia. You have to take another water. And as you drink that water, the pattern continues. So the body is actually trying to help you, but it's unable. So it's actually messing you up totally. Now, Again, because you have high ketones in the system, that is acidosis. And then that will lead you to this shortness of breath. Remember, it's the role of the lungs to actually excrete excess uh, carbon uh, dioxide. Okay? The carbon dioxide in the system is excreted through the lungs. So when you have this acidosis, you realize that you have these deep and shallow breaths. Sometimes you breathe so fast and shallow breaths because you are trying to bring in oxygen to actually try and ease up on the levels of acidosis in the system. Okay, and that, uh, that's the reason why another symptom is actually the shortness of breath and also it's called cosmol respiration. You have these shallow but very fast breaths. And then muscle cramps because potassium is going out. And then cardiac arrhythmias. Arrhythmias means uh, irregular uh, heart rhythms. So your heart is beating irregularly because you're losing potassium, of course. Okay, so you have all these things. And because you're losing glucose again, polyphagia is coming in, excessive hunger. So the symptoms are actually linked to the three things. High glucose levels, which is excreted in urine, and then high ketone bodies that actually cause you acidosis. And then of course, uh, the acidosis now that comes in with high ketone bodies. So you can easily see those symptoms. However, for polyuria, I've just told you, you're excreting glucose, it's water follows and electrolytes follow. Once that happens, dehydration is coming in, hypokalemia is coming in. And I will talk about this hypokalemia when I'll be talking or tackling the topic that is uh, the treatment using the insulin therapy. Okay. Now, I've told you the most important electrolyte that is being lost through this process is potassium. And potassium is highly regulated. And if you lose potassium, that means arrhythmias, more arrhythmias. And the things that actually kill these people is dehydration, is acidosis, which is going to cause you kidney problems and uh, de dying of cells, is of course uh, the arrhythmias, the heart muscles that are actually uh, very unregulated. The heart rhythms are actually very unregulated because of low potassium. 
So this is actually an emergency and you need to actually be careful. But do not confuse it with the ketogenesis. Now, look at it this way. Once these people have been admitted, they're supposed to do all these tests and ascertain that this one is uh, diabetes type 1 and this one is DKA, a complication of diabetes type 1. So already we are in complications. Now, the vitals have to be done, monitoring has to be done, and this has to be done in, a, in a basically a HDU or ICU. So this is not a case, uh, like normal cases, like a nurse will just put uh, the drip and then go away until the, uh, the guardians of the patient come and tell the nurse, you know what, insulin in no, this is a different case. So they have to be there, monitor every parameter as the patient uh, keeps on surviving. But the most important part here is, these patients are in shock. So what are we targeting? We need to target a replacement of the fluids that are being lost when they kept on urinating. So we have to keep on rehydrating them with the fluids. The normal saline, which is basically salt, does a very important job here. So we actually treat sugar problems with salt. So how did you start blaming salt anyway? But then, as you do that, you monitor and then as their potassium level starts to increase. So you're actually monitoring fluid and then you're monitoring electrolytes. So as the electrolyte starts to improve, the potassium starts to improve back into the normal levels, now you can actually administer insulin. So this is for those of you who are actually working in these centers that are regulating these people or trying to recover uh, these people. Do not start by just in administering insulin instantly. Doctors, please. Because if you, insu you, you administer insulin uh, directly before you monitor the parameters, remember that DKA causes hypokalemia, low potassium in blood, which is causing the arrhythmias. Okay, and then now you're coming with insulin, injecting them because you want them to recover faster. But the reality is this. Insulin pumps potassium from blood into the cells. So it will actually cause serum hypocalcemia. So insulin can be a double tragedy to this. So when you just initiate insulin therapy instantly, that patient might pass away from a cardiac arrest. Why? Because you've pumped potassium. The least potassium that was actually in blood now is now being pumped into the cells intracellularly. And that means now in the serum or in the blood, there'll be low potassium. That is serum hypokal hypokalemia a problem. So be careful. Start by uh, fluid and electrolyte uh, replacement. And then from there, you can actually now start administering insulin so that they can actually recover. Now, my question was that the counter-regulatory hormones that are being produced in DKA to actually break down fat to give you ketone bodies. So my question comes in this way. Where did that fat come from? Is it not from the carbohydrates that we eat that are actually stored in the fat cells? So where did that, where did that fat come from? If this person is actually type 1 diabetic and they don't have enough insulin to pump glucose into the cells, where did that fat come from? I think that's a question that most of you should answer in the comment section. Once again, thank you so much for uh, listening to me. Uh, I hope I've impacted you positively on this uh, topic and I hope that you can actually take care of yourselves because even if we try to manage a DKA, the cause of DKA is diabetes. It is a complication of diabetes. So therefore, your major role is to actually reverse diabetes and you can actually do it through dietary modifications and lifestyle. So I hope that you can actually take the things that we preach on this channel seriously because you are not designed to be on drugs for a lifetime and you're not designed to be diabetic for a lifetime. You can actually do these reversals by just changing the kitchen.